In today's class, we're going to build a four-page HTML5 CSS3 website totally from scratch. We're going to do everything from scratch. We're going to set up the site from scratch. We're going to create the code for the CSS rules from scratch. I'm going to show you my proven simple, simple method. I'm getting a little annoyed by all the tutorials out there that go into code and drive people insane. Dreamweaver is a WYSIWYG program benefited, benefit from its WYSIWYG interface. I want to make this simple, simple, simple. Other tutorials confuse you with a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of code, a bunch of bad technique. I'm here to share with you how to do this the simple, right way, and I hope you'll agree. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is make yourself a new file. File new, new file, command N, Macintosh, control N for Windows. We're going to create an HTML5 document. Now, I talked about this before in a previous video. But if it's not set to HTML5, you can set that by default in your preferences. You can go to your preferences up here. This window has to be closed, though, and in the preferences is new file. You can set your default to HTML5. So we're going to create that. Okay. Now we're going to save the file. Now, we don't have a place for this file to go yet, so on my desktop, I'm going to go to my desktop, and on the desktop, inside of a folder called Websites, Double click. I'm going to create a new folder for my HTML5 website. So I'm going to simply call HTML5 hyphen website. Then this is going to be the index page. So I N D E X. Now, as a side note, we talked about this before in previous videos. Assume index page is already on the server saying coming soon under development. So we're going to call this by default. We're going to call this the version page, index version one. Save the file. Okay. Then we want to title the page. Okay. So I would always put a name of the site. So mysite.com. Then let's say we're in the wholesale coffee business, what I do is I put the pipe symbol, three keys from the P key. So we're going to put wholesale coffee. If I learn how to spell, that'd be better. And let's say we offer free shipping. So title the page. Never go further with your file until you title the page. If you do a Google search, you'll see there's tons of knuckles out there with untitled documents. Okay, now. We need to define our site, define the site. So we're going to put a site, we're going to put a new site. Now, if it helps you, we could simply copy and paste the name of the site that we have, which is my HTML website. So let's just put that here, generically, HTML5 hyphen website. Now, we need to tell Dreamweaver where the site is kept. Now, once you do this, don't move the file. So we're going to click here, and we're going to choose not this site. We're going to choose this site. This is our new site, our new domain name, our new root folder. So we're going to choose that and hit Save. Now, anytime I save a file, it should be saved to that root folder. OK, so as an example, if I go to File, Save, as right now, let's say I was someplace else. Let's say I was inside my documents folder, or inside my downloads folder. I could simply now hit the site root in Dreamweaver smart enough to know to go back to my site root. It puts me right there. So wherever you are, applications, desktop, wherever folder you're in by mistake, you get the site root that will take immediately to your root folder. So it's a good technique. My videos, my in-depth training videos are all about shortcuts, production techniques, and how to squeeze the, squeeze the sponge from the clock and make this the most productive training class to get you to do better production so therefore you can make more money because time is money. Now I want to share with you a very undocumented production technique here. We're going to go to preferences. Now, in a previous video, I talked about how I can change the fonts of my code view. Notice that code view typically is very small. And for those of you over 30, which I'm 20 years past that, I need to increase the size of my code view. But I, 
a very unknown trick here is you ever wonder why the font defaults to a certain typeface before you put a body tag or before you put a font family, it gets information from here. So as an example, let's say that you want to, you don't want to do Times Roman as your default body tag font. Let's say I want to do for Dana, for Dana, for Dana, 16 pixels. So I could set this to 16 pixels. Let's cancel this for a second. Let's just put in some text. So you can actually see. So this is my default text that ships with Dreamweaver. However, if I go back to preferences and I go to the category called font, font category, and I set this to for Dana, for Dana, 16 pixels. Therefore, now unfortunately, there's not an apply option in here. There's just an OK button. So this is now going to change to that default font. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means if I now create a body tag, I technically don't have to. If I go down to tag here and I set my body, I'm sorry, tag, not ID. If I set my body tag, I technically don't have to set a font family to Verdana because it defaults to Verdana. Okay, because that's what I have the, the uh, font defaulting to. So I don't actually technically have to change that. Okay. Is that sort of defaulting to? However, I'm going to cancel this for a second. Okay, I like to expand on the technique I shared with you. Even though we set the preferences to for data 16 pixels, very important step here. There's no place inside the code that says that, so therefore the browser is not going to know what to do with that particular font. So we still have to set the default font that the browser is going to talk to. So I'm going to make a rule here in the bottom right-hand corner, and I'm going to go to tag, and I'm going to set the body tag by default to, let's set this to for Dana. So what happens here, if the person doesn't have this typeface, it defaults to this typeface on their computer if they don't have it. Now, rather than, a little technique here, rather than set this to 14 or 15 or 16 pixels, we could set this to 100% which means it's 100% of its default value, the default value that you set inside of the application. So notice that this doesn't change here because it's set to 100%. Now, the advantage of that thinking is, let's say that I didn't set that. That's going to default to its default value of 16 pixels. So if I put it in 16 here, that's redundancy. However, 16 pixels, by the way. Okay. Now, let's think about this at a practical Manner. So as an example, let's say that you have a body copy and you want to make an H2 tag bigger than the body copy. Let's say you forgot what your body size was, in this particular case, 16. So therefore, to make it 18, to make it 20. So another technique here, I can make this a percentage. So if you make this 100%, therefore I can make my H1 tag 120%, 130%, 140%, etc., etc., etc. Now, another technique we can use here, too, is something called M spacing. So, EM in M is equal to the height of the capital M of the base font. In this particular case, 16 pixels, 16 pixels for Dana. So, if we set this to 1 EM, notice that the font size is not going to change because it's set to itself, which is 1 M. In M space is equal to the height of a capital M. So therefore, if my type is with 16 pixels, in this particular case, 16 equals 1M. If my type is with 12, 12 equals 1M. So if you change this to 2Ms, as an example, this is going to be what? This is going to be 2 times 16, or 32. It's now 32 pixels, because it's 2M. M is equal to the height of the letter M. So I could technically make this one M space. Now, unfortunately, programs like Internet Explorer, the old program, has a problem with M spaces. They'd have to set pixel spaces, but the new Internet Explorer solves that problem. So notice we don't have to set this to black because it defaults to black. So we're going to set this to one M space. Hit, hit OK. Now, before we go further here, I just want to share with you that we're working in classic mode. If you don't have classic mode set, I'm going to go and reset classic mode. I'm going to go to classic and reset this. 
this will behave exactly on your computer as it does on my computer. Now, in classic mode, if you look here to the right, I have tons and tons of palettes, most of which we don't need. So I, the only palette I want to see here is my CSS palette. Every other palette we can close. We don't need these palettes. They're going to be confusing. We don't need them for building our website today. So the only palette I want to have here is the CSS palette. Of course, I want the property palette and the insertion palette up here. That's by default. So as an example, if your CSS palette is closed, I could come to Window, Window, CSS Styles. So in our next video, we're going to start to build this entire website totally from scratch. We already defined the site. We already set up our body tag. So we'll continue in the next video.